In this video, we're going to talk about the situations in which posture and biomechanics do matter. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. In the last video, we talked about the fact that most of the evidence shows no association between posture and pain. If you haven't watched this video yet, you can do so by a click in the info card in the top right corner. Now let's talk about the situations in which posture and biomechanics do actually matter. High load activities. During activities like sprinting, jumping or performing a one repetition maximum deadlift for example, joint stresses are very high and the body has had less opportunity to adapt to those stresses. So there is probably a better way to land if you're jumping down from a wall, as successive knee valgus might put the ACL at risk of rupturing. In comparison, joint stresses are way lower during activities like sitting or standing, and your body has had a better chance to adapt as it has experienced these stresses thousands of times per day for many years before. This even seems to be the case in lower load activities like running and which even some of the best marathon runners seem to be able to get away with a huge amount of pronation or knee valgus. This also shows that there is probably not a bad way to move by definition, but the problem rather is the movement you're not prepared for that increases the risk for injury. In these low load activities, repetitive overload might lead to conditions like patellofemoral pain syndrome but certainly your kneecap will not explode or will you experience tissue failure due to trauma like in high load activities. Be careful not to think in terms of black and white, so important or not important, but it's rather a spectrum where biomechanics are more or less important. Although there might be a favorable posture during high load activities, we should realize that the ideal posture is probably not one static position, but rather a range. If we look at a deadlift, for example, a study by Holder in 2013 showed that the lumbar spine undergoes 22 degrees of flexion on average, even when the lumbar spine looked perfectly neutral during the lift. Due to these reasons, we should restrain ourselves from constantly overcoaching our patients or clients when we teach them new movements and exercises. Our primary goal should be to increase their capacity, robustness, resilience, strength, endurance, and especially confidence in the movement first, and have them enjoy the exercise, and then correct movement flaws in a second step. The second area where posture and biomechanics matter is in patients in which a certain posture or movement is painful or sensitive, and they keep assuming this posture or keep doing this movement. For example, a person might be experiencing pain with their lumbar spine inflection and for some reason they keep sitting and standing with a flexed spine. The problem is not so much that spinal flexion is bad, but that they keep sensitizing their back. In these cases it is helpful to avoid flexed positions for a little while and or to exercise into extension positions. After the pain has settled down, they can then gradually move into flexion again. Although posture and pain have no association, posture is associated with psychological issues such as depression and chronic fatigue, like shown in a study of Wilkes et al. in 2016. In turn, these factors can have a negative influence on recovery in a broad range of musculoskeletal conditions. And at last, not so much posture, but rather your ability to move through full range of motion might be necessary to perform functional activities. For example, being able to extend your thoracic spine is necessary to effectively reach overhead, look back or to perform an overhead squat. So in these cases, biomechanics are important to enable you to perform certain activities. Alright, this was our video on when posture and biomechanics do matter. Do you have other examples of your own? If you do so, feel free to post them in the comment section down below. 
By a click on a video right next to me, you can watch our video on the association between poor posture and pain that I referred to earlier on. A lot of this information and much more can be found on our future course on the spine on our website study.physiotutors.com. Kai, for Physiotutors, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.